Hi, this is Jonathan with Echo Church. Thank you for joining us. Book of Acts chapter four. Here, Peter and John are led before uh, the uh, council of religious leaders. Uh, their uh, actions and their activities are being noticed. And now the brand new church is already beginning to experience uh, some uh, persecution. So I'd like us to be aware that to become Christian um, doesn't always mean that uh, life will be trouble free. In fact, uh, there are different kinds of uh, problems that arise when we come to know Jesus Christ. And we need to uh, embrace that. We need to be um, aware of that. And that is because we truly uh, change allegiance uh, from the way of the world to the way of Jesus. We said that we follow not ourselves or our uh, own uh, human wisdom or rules, but we say we will follow Jesus as Lord and King and God. And whenever we make that kind of a statement uh, by becoming um, Jesus followers and, and Christians, then it is inevitable that uh, persecutions do happen. But God is uh, with us. In the case of uh, uh, Peter and John, uh, they were led before the religious uh, leaders and they were examined uh, by them. And verse 13 it says, now they, the uh, religious leaders, uh, the Jewish leaders, saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, and they were astonished. <sighs> So we don't have to be all put together uh, to follow Jesus. And in fact, um, we don't have to be all put together uh, to face these uh, spiritual and, and uh, societal challenges. Why? Because here it says, and they, the religious leaders, recognize that they, Peter and John, had been with Jesus. What makes us different and what makes us strong and what makes us uh, keep going is being with Jesus. Of course, um, for us, we have the Holy Spirit in us and He always leads us to and brings us closer to Jesus Christ and that uh, we can remain with Christ, that we can abide with Christ in our everyday life. And that's what makes us different. That's what makes us unique. And that's what made Peter and John different is because they had been with Jesus physically for over three years. And that's what made them to be different, even though they may not have the education that the religious leaders had and the uh, experience. And uh, going down after. Uh, John and Peter were told not to uh, preach and not to teach uh, in the name of Jesus. Verse uh, 20, it says, uh, well, you must judge for we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. This is really significant. And, and what Peter and, and John were saying here is that we know what we have experienced. We know what we know. And we know whom we have believed and we have put faith in. And on top of that, we have received the Holy Spirit. These things combined make their faith absolutely solid. And, and they can say, look, you can do whatever uh, you want or you need to, and then you can tell me what to do and what not to do. But we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Nothing, absolutely nothing in the world can change our mind, our heart, our faith. Why? Because of what they have experienced and what they have uh, seen and what they have believed. And on top of that, 
they are indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And so those uh, three things are extremely important for us to have this solid faith in God that uh, nothing can shake. And that is number one is our uh, knowledge of God. Uh, hopefully it's a firsthand experiential knowledge of God. Uh, what is that? Uh, it, it varies. It, it may be the scriptures. It may be some uh, uh, supernatural encounter with the Lord or some experience that really uh, made, it was very personal that made you uh, fully convinced that God is real and God is love and God is good. And the God is who Jesus uh, says he is. And, and that kind of experience, uh, whether through the word, uh, can be a, a intellectual in nature, but really just know that, know that, know that God is real. Uh, that is number one. And, and all of us have had that kind of experience. And if you, if you don't, or if you haven't, you can ask God for that. Uh, it doesn't have to be a burning bush, but it can be subtle, but you know for sure in that moment of still small voice that you know that God is real. And then the second thing is uh, our our faith, of course, in God is just that we, we begin to believe that and, and uh, uh, the be believe in the word of God, that the word of God is true. Sometimes it is an uh, intellectual thing in the sense that, well, this is what the Bible says that I know I'm supposed to believe it. And so I choose to believe it. That's part of uh, uh, having a solid faith is when we look around uh, the world and nothing seems to make sense and, and nothing is what the Bible even says. And in that moment, we simply choose to believe and say, because the word of God says this, so I choose to believe, and that's part of it. And there are times when we just have to uh, choose to believe. And then thirdly, uh, know that the Holy Spirit is in us, that we look to the Holy Spirit within us for assurance and confirmation, affirmation, and, and sometimes conviction, and uh, finally, to uh, keep our faith intact. These three uh, have to be together for our uh, Christian walk to be absolutely solid, like here, uh, Peter and uh, John. Well, we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Their faith was absolutely unshakable. And then lastly, uh, further down verse, uh, 23, they were released and they came uh, back to uh, other believers. And verse 23 says, when they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they, the group, heard it, they lifted their voice together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heavens and earth and sea and everything in them. I love the way they begin their prayer. Instead of focusing on what just happened or become afraid of, oh, wow, you know, they, the, the Pete, uh, Peter and John, the, our leaders are arrested. And, no, what's going to happen to the movement? Well, maybe uh, I am going to be the next to be arrested. Uh, easily fear could grip us in a situation like that. And instead, they, when they went to prayer, they focused on who God is. Sovereign Lord, who made a heaven and earth and sea and everything else. In fact, starting a prayer by focusing on the Lord, they were bold. In fact, they became bold. And so verse 29, at the end of their prayer, it says, And now, Lord, Look upon their uh, threats 
and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. Instead of saying, oh Lord, please protect us from uh, the religious leaders. Uh, please protect us from all the persecutions. Please keep us safe. Instead, they simply said, grant us your bold, uh, the boldness to continue to speak your word. They will not back down. They know what they have believed. They know what they have seen. They know what they have experienced, as I mentioned earlier. So there's no turning back. Uh, there's no backing off. They are confidently, but in humility, standing uh, their ground. And so they ask for boldness. They ask that uh, the grant their ser uh, the grant uh, your servants to continue to to do what they have been doing, and. I hope that we can have that kind of faith, that instead of becoming defensive, instead of uh, becoming fearful, that uh, we can remain uh, offensive in a good sense, that we can uh, stand the ground and we can still be the light of the world and we can be the messenger of hope and peace and love. Uh, in Jesus Christ, that we want to have the same kind of uh, uh, forward-looking, proactive attitude. Then it says, while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. It's amazing that they're asking the Holy Spirit, they're asking God to... Uh, uh, come alongside with their effort to vindicate their words and their proclamation with their, with God's demonstration of the power to heal. And, and that is the power of the kingdom to restore all things. It is the power of restoration. It's a power of love that uh, Jesus' followers here are asking God to uh, substantiate their claim of who Jesus with the uh, reality of the kingdom of God. And that's something we can also do in our life, that as we talk about Jesus and uh, as we talk about how God has touched our life and how God is real and can change people's lives, we can count on God. And in, in, in fact, not only just counting on God, but to actually ask God, to come and demonstrate uh, his love in a powerful way, in, in a restorative way uh, uh, in the life of the of person, people that uh, we're ministering to. And so this section of scripture, uh, Acts chapter four, is powerful uh, example that is given to us uh, in, in terms of how we're supposed to operate it. And we're supposed to act as believers in today's society. And so uh, I want to encourage you to read Acts chapter 4 and uh, take these sections of scriptures uh, to God in prayer and, and ask, Lord, how can we uh, live like this in, in my life and in today's society? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for... Uh, uh, the example of the first century uh, believers, Christians, and in cooperation and partnership with the Holy Spirit. And so we pray and ask that uh, you will teach us from this passage how we're to live today, here, now, and uh, so that uh, your name may be glorified. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us and see you next week.